A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Why are Jewish mourning practices more strict regarding one's mother or father as compared to one's wife? Is it not true that Chazal stress how great is the loss of one's spouse? In point of fact, the mourning practices and the halachot, the laws regarding mourning for a relative, all the relatives for uh, whom one is required to mourn, are the same, essentially the same. In other words, we have the seven-day mourning period, the shiva, and we have the 30-day mourning period where some aspects of the seven-day mourning period remain in force mm -hmm. to the end of 30 days. All these apply to uh, any mourner for any one of those individuals for whom a Jew is required to mourn. With the exception uh, of one, uh, one particular point of Jewish law and mourning practice, and that is attending a, uh, a great festive meal, a great, uh, very happy event such as a wedding, in which case we find in the Gemara the following statement, and I'll read it to you. This is in the Tamud Bavli in Masechet Mu'id Katan, Kaf Beth Amud Beth 22b. It says as follows: Al kol hametim kulam nichnas levet hasimcha lahar shaloshim yom. With regards to all uh, relatives for whom one is required to mourn, once they have died, one is allowed to go to a, a house of celebration, such as a wedding, after thirty days. So the thirty-day period is the end of all official and obvious signs of mourning. However, but if it, one is mourning for one's parents, one's father or one's mother, one has to wait 12 months until one can go to such a wedding or some great festivity. Here we do not find the same uh, statement made with regards to one's wife, for example. And this, in fact, should cause us to uh, ask ourselves a few questions, because we find in the, uh, in the, in the Gemara, elsewhere, in Masechet Sanhedri, in the Tamud Bavli, Daf Kaf Be Tamud Aleph, we find a number of statements referring to the enormity of the loss for a man who loses his, his wife, his first wife. It says as follows, Amara B. Alexandre, a man who loses his, his first wife in his days, in other words, that, he, that his wife dies before him. His world becomes dark. As it says in the Pasuk, in Yov, or Hashach Ba'aholo, when Nero Alo Yidach. He goes on to say, Rabbi Yose Bar Hanina. Amar Pesiotho his steps become shorter. Shenemar Yesaru Saade Ono. And Rabbi Abahu adds Asatho no Felith. He loses some of his ability to to think, to analyze, to fully understand a situation and come up with uh, the right answer. Shenemar wa Tashlikehu Asatho. And the most uh, obvious and uh, unequivocal statement regarding this is to be found at the bottom of this page, Kaf Beth Amud Aleph in Sanhedrin. Amar Rabbi Shemuel ban Nahman, Lakol Yesh Temura. For all people, there is a substitute. One can come up with a substitute for all people that one loses. Husmi Eshath Neorim, except for the wife of one's youth. Shenemar. So we find here a number of very unequivocal, very powerful, and uh, very profound statements of Hazal that the loss for a man of his, of his first wife, and I think it's fair to assume that at least to some extent the same is true. To a large extent, I think the same must be true for a woman who loses her, the husband of her youth, 
perhaps it's not quite the same for reasons that I don't want to go into right now, but nevertheless, I'm, sh I'm sure there is uh, room to make that uh, fairly obvious parallel and comparison. In the case of a man losing his first wife, Chazal are very clear that the loss is, is enormous and has a tremendous impact on the individual. And yet, and Chazal do not make such statements with regards to the loss of one's parents. So we have uh, a situation before us where, on the one hand, Chazal stress that the loss of one's wife, one's, the wife of one's youth, is a greater loss than the loss of one's parents. On the other hand, we find that the Halakha stipulates that uh, a person who has lost a parent does not attend a wedding, for example, for 12 months, whereas a man who has lost his wife may attend a wedding after 30 days. And this may seem somewhat contradictory. It seems to me that the correct uh, way of approaching this matter and understanding this halakha and these statements of the Chachamim is as follows. First of all, it goes without saying that sof kol adam lamita, every person one day must die. And this of course also is true for every person's parents. This is the way of the world. So the loss is very great, but it is not unusual. It is, is, it is the way of the world that is to be expected. And yes, one is required uh, to show particular respect and to mourn uh, even for an even longer period with regards to this particular issue of going to a wedding, for example, for one's parents, uh, which is a, a function of the miswa of kibud av wa'em, of honoring and respecting one's parents. That is true. And that is why, with regards to one's parents, the period of mourning with regards to going to such a wedding or fest festive occasion is, is such. It is longer than for any other t uh, type of mourning, any other kind of bereavement. As opposed to a person who loses his wife, which is very often not the order of the, of the world, very often it is more common, much more common, that the woman outlives the man. And it is also true that uh, men rely in their day-to-day -day lives, in the running of their homes and, and uh, taking care of many of their basic needs and uh, requirements, etc., they rely much more on their wives than their wives rely on them. So the loss, and not to mention, of course, the emotional and, uh, and other aspects of, of a man's connection with his wife, therefore, the loss of one's wife is, is a greater loss. And and Chazal make this very clear in these statements. On the other hand, there is a, another and opposite uh, consideration to be taken into account, and that is that a man may lose his parents. Every person loses his or her parents eventually. And this cannot, of course, be uh, considered a reason uh, to stop the normal flow of life because the person remains as he was before in, in as much as he has a family, he has a wife, he continues living his, his, life, his life as before, he mourns his parents, he shows them respect, but his life does not come to a standstill. Whereas in the case of a man who loses his, his wife, his first wife, the wife of his youth, it can be seen in many ways it can be viewed as, as uh, this, this person's life coming to a standstill, coming to a, a point which, from which it is very difficult to continue moving forward and uh, continue living life. And here Chazal wanted to stress that therefore we are telling you that after 30 days you must pick yourself up and despite the loss of your wife, you must pick yourself up and continue. And the same applies to women. You have lost your husband and this is a tremendous blow and your life in many ways has come to a halt. But you must know that life does not come to a halt and you must continue and part of life is, is meeting with your friends and going to their smahoth, going to their weddings. And you, and you should do so after 30 days because Chazal wanted everyone to understand that bereavement cannot B cannot cause the end of normal existence. There is a time, a period of mourning for crying and, and uh, lamenting and there's a time for picking oneself up and continuing.
as it says in Sefer Koheleth. There is a time for crying and there is a time for laughter. So after 30 days, a man or a woman who has lost their spouse may, and in fact uh, one could even say should, go to weddings and continue in their uh, social en engagements and, and, and uh, obligations as before, because life does not and should not come to a halt. One should not allow the bereavement, which is an unnatural bereavement in many ways, to bring about a total collapse of one's normal order. And this can also be seen in another halakha, uh, which, uh, which the Talmud Yerushami Davka stresses more than the Talmud Bavli. The, the normal halakha is that a man who has lost his wife may not remarry until three Yamim Tovim have passed, that is to say Sukkot, Pesach Shavuot, or Pesach Shavuot Sukkot, in whatever order, until three of the Yamim Tovim have passed. However, in the Talmud Yerushami, it points out that there is an exception to this rule, and that is in the case of a person who, uh, both the Talmud Bavli and Yerushami, I should point out, stress that if a person has young children who need a mother to look after them, etc., then he may, he may uh, remarry after 30 days. The Talmud Yerushami stresses something which the Talmud Bavli does not, but this is nevertheless brought in all the Posikim, in the Rif, and the Rosh, and the Rambam, etc., and the source is in the Talmud Yerushami. The Talmud Yerushami stresses that uh, a person, a man, who has lost his wife, and therefore now he's, he's basically uh, unable to fend for himself, he can't run his home and, and run his business or go to work and take care of everything by himself, basically his life will now be, uh, will be in a state of collapse if he does not remarry, essentially. Such a man may uh, remarry after 30 days. And that is uh, an interesting point that Yerushalmi makes, which the Bavli omits to make, and yet this is the halakha pesuka uh, in all the posakim, that such considerations are greater than the consideration of mourning, mourning the dead. In other words, life, uh, when all is said and done, the living and the continuation of, of life overrides the mourning of the dead. Thank you, Rabbi Baruch Hayim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the Rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the Rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.